What if I had to start all over? Illustrations by B. So I was given some thought. What if something happened and I lost all my stuff and I had to start all over from scratch with nothing else but with the experience and the know-how that I have now? What would I get? What would I do? This may help some of you to get into art if you're thinking about it but you're not sure what to get. This is just for me. This is my personal preference, but it could help you. It could work. So I'm going to start with the cheapest option. I'm going to give you five options and see if we, and there's a couple ABs in there too, in case you want to go one way or another. But I'll give you five options that you can start with and see if this helps you. So the first one's going to start under $30. Now I know a lot of people don't like this book, but from experience, I know what it can do, and it will help you in this step. This Canson XL Mixed Media Book, it's cheap. It does not cost a lot of money. There's a lot of pages in there. It's kind of heavyweight. It holds up well to a lot of different things. I don't think I've ever paid more than $6 for this book, but... On Amazon right now, I think the cheapest price I found was like $8.39. So I have notes today. I need notes. I'm not going to remember all this. So $8.39 for this. And that's with free delivery. But I've gone into Michael's and had coupons or gone into local stores, big box stores, had coupons and got it cheaper. So I don't think I've ever paid more than about $6. Then if you're going to be sketching... I'd get the Mars Lumograph Black. These pencils do not reflect anything. I've done a video on that and I might link it if I remember to do that. Sometimes I say, oh, I'm going to link it down below. And then there's nothing down below. I have a terrible memory. So, but these are very good. They, it goes from HB to 8B. And so you can play with those and, and sketch and just learn your shade and your contrast and all that stuff from these pencils. They're good to get. Then you need a fine liner, but they I don't know what happened recently. They've all jumped like ridiculous pricing, but these have stayed relatively low. These are the Tombow Mono fine liners and they call them drawing pens, but that's what they are. They're the fine liners. They come in the uh, 01, 03, and 05 sizes, just like the Sakuras do. The, the three blister pack, it's the same thing. It's just different company. And these are about $8.69. I didn't mention for the pencils. I only paid like $4 for these because they were on sale plus I had a coupon. But on Amazon right now, they're about $9.81. So this whole set, the book, the pencils, the fine liners, is going to run you about $26.89 plus tax. That's not unreasonable. It's very easy to get into that. There's a lot of paper in here. You can sketch until your fingers fall off. You won't have a problem. And it'll hold up fine. Pencil and ink, there's no problem with this. And the thing that I do like is if you do something you like, it is perforated. You can tear one of these out and put it in a book or do whatever you want give it to a friend whatever you want to do and I did not say I didn't include the other I don't usually use an eraser with pencil but if you did need to use an eraser you can get the Faber-Castell dust-free erasers they're my favorite eraser the only reason that I get them is because it's a soft eraser it doesn't tear up the page some erasers you go at it and it starts to tear up the page. I don't like that. So these are very soft. They do have some dust. They're not dust free. They're just bigger chunks of dust. So it's easier to clean. But they're great. I love these. I think a four pack will run you like six and change. Pencil sharpener. There's a couple of them that you're going to need. You're, if you have pencils, you'll need a pencil sharpener unless you get a lead holder with lead and I didn't put that on the list but that's something that I really like to do I like to get the lead holder that holds the two millimeter leads in them this is my favorite one it's a Stetler Mars Lumograph and uh, you see it has the the two millimeter lead in there and and you can just you don't have to have a sharpener for those because they they're just all lead you don't have to sharpen it but if you do need to get a sharpener I prefer 
the Derwent Super Point is my favorite sharpener. I've sharpened pastel pencils in this with not breaking them. That's a pastel pencil. And you see the tip on that thing? It was in this. It was in the Super Point. That's how I did that. That's how I sharpen all my pencils always. If I have to go out somewhere and go do something, I use this. This is, I don't know if this is the original Coom, but it's a version of it, which has the two different tips here. And you can also sharpen lead holders in the side. But it's, it's fine to take with you. It's not the best. It's not the big greatest point, but it's fine. It'll work. I was not talking about those things in that set. You'll have to get those on your own. That's that's different. So now we're going to take it a, just a step further. If you just want to add a little bit of color in your life, you're going to get basically the same things. You're going to get the Canson XL, and then you're going to get the Tombow Mono drawing pens, and then the Daniel Smith Essential Set. The Daniel Smith Essential Set has two yellows, two blues, and two reds. They're cool and a warm of each. I am not a fan of that because I already know what I like and I don't like the cool yellows or the warm blues. I don't like them and usually not the too warm. I don't like the warm reds. I like an orange, but not a warm red that's just a warmer red. I like the cooler red and an orange instead. But it's a good set to figure out what you like and don't worry about a palette. Just put it on a paper plate. You can, when you're done using it, just let it dry. You can come back and re-wet it. Or you could put, take an old piece of plastic. That's the best thing to do if you have an old piece of plastic. So that's what I've done here. I have an old piece of plastic and I just put the paint on it and I let it dry and I can come back to it, use it whenever I want. It stays fine forever. It Just keep it covered so no dust gets on it. But it's fine. Just It's okay like that. Now the Daniel Smith Essential set of paints is going to run you about $35.43 right now on Amazon. You need a brush. So this is going to be a debate for people. I like the Aquash, the Pentel Aquash water brushes. I've learned to use them properly. They have a little reservoir right here that it, you can see when it fills up, you know it's going to be a very wet brush. And when it's empty, you know it's going to be a very dry brush. It's not hard to use, but some people struggle with it. You have to learn. Anything you have, you have to learn how to use it. Even a pencil or a pen. You have to figure out how am I supposed to use this the proper way. These take there's a learning curve here, but there is for watercolor brushes as well. And if you don't get the best watercolor brushes, you have different issues that you do not have with this. But if you have to get a regular watercolor brush, there's a couple of brands that I recommend. One, the cheapest one you can find, but still good, is got to be the Simply Simmons brushes. They're great brushes for just doing simple watercolor stuff, putting down some color. Next is my favorite type of brush, the Princeton Aqua Elite brush. It's a great brush, and I like to get these. This is called an angle. This is a sword, but usually the sword brushes are a lot taller on one end and they have a bigger steep uh, cut in. But let's call that for the Simply Simmons. They're the half inch. They work great. If you need a round, you can just use that part and just, it's a round. You're basically just a thin line on the one side. Uh, if you need to use it like a flat brush, you just run it across. It's a great brush. That's how I use these. These are my favorite types of brushes. I have a couple of these. This one, I only have one, but I use it a lot. I don't use it in videos because I usually use the water brush in the video. I don't like to have water everywhere while I'm trying to record and I have equipment around. But if I'm just hanging out, sitting down, and I don't have electronics all over the place, then I use these and I they're fine. I like them. Brushes are going to run you anywhere from, like if you get the full set of the uh, Pentel Aquash brushes, the four of them, there's a flat, small, medium, and large. That's going to run you about $20. And then if you just want one of these, you can go into a Michaels and buy this for like $3.99. So it's going to vary depending on what you're going to use and what you're going to get. Roughly, you're looking between $60 to $75 to get a sketchbook, the pens, some good quality paints. The Daniel Smith paints are top of the line. 
and a brush or a set of brushes between 60 and 75 dollars that's not bad okay there's another set i'm going to give you here some people like this some people don't but this is stillman and burn nova gray book i love this book you can put pencil pen watercolor gouache whatever you want now i use the gray because i like it but i'm i'm gonna try getting the tan and they also have a black book, but that's not applicable to what I'm talking about here right now. But you could get the gray or the tan book. And the reason that I say that is because you get one of these. It's around $26 and change, $27 to get one of these. And this is the bigger one, so this is going to be the 8x10. No, this is, yeah, this is the 8x10. You can get all different sizes. They have the 75 by 75 or they have all different sizes. You can check them out. And they're a little bit cheaper the smaller they go. So, but this is a good size for me. I like it. And it, it's a good book. And the reason that I say to get this is you then get the pens. You get black ink pens. And then you get the white jelly roll pens. And you can get a set of those, six of them. Three different sizes. It's like a fine, medium, and large nib of the Secure Jelly Rolls. For like $8.20, they're not very expensive for six pens. That's under $50, like $43.81 to get this with the ink and the Secure Jelly Rolls. That's not bad. And drawing black and white is fun. It, I enjoy it. It's nice. I... I it makes it almost like a 3D pop on the picture. See that? It's like a, there's like a 3D pop on that guy. Like he's coming off the page. It's kind of cool. And there's a neurographic piece. It's like a tribal neurographic something black and white. And I think it looks nice. I think the way that it pops off the page, it just looks nice. Now you go a little bit further with that. And this is going to be the B version of this one. You do the same thing, but then you get white gouache. M gram white gouache is just a lot of white gouache dries and crumbles. It usually does. The M gram version is probably the wettest one that I know of, and it stays wet longer, and it doesn't crumble as much when it does dry. So it's better, in my opinion. I like that one. That's what I use. And then, of course, you would need the set of brushes. So the gouache is about $18.77 for a two-ounce tube. It's decent size. It's going to last you a while, especially you're just putting some background in the book. It's, it's not a big deal. And then the brushes, of course, vary greatly. So roughly, you're going to spend about $83 on that set of stuff. You have the book. You have the uh, fine liners. You have the jelly rolls. And then you have the gouache and the brushes, about $83. You probably cut that down to $75 or so if you get just the single brush, the cheaper one. Okay, now we're going to go a little bit more top of the line. The Etcher Hot Press book, which is one of my favorite hot press books that is made by a manufacturer. I think the paper is amazing. I love it. So... That's $29. They've raised the price. They used to be $25 each for the 8x5. It's actually a 5.8 by 8.3, but it I, everybody just says 8x5. That's what it is. $29, but that's what it is. It's one of the best books on the market, so you're going to pay a little bit more for it. Again, with the, the reason that I say the Tombow drawing pens is because... They're cheaper than Sakura right now. I don't know what happened with the fine liners. They feel a little bit cheaper, but they are the nibs are actually better. They last longer than Sakura, and they feel cheaper, but they work the same. They're still you want an India ink that's waterproof because you're gonna go over with watercolor eventually, and also it's fade resistant. It's archival because it's India ink, so that's very important. And then. For the color, you're going to go with the Derwent Graphitint set. You see some of those colors. It's very, very vibrant. They're just, they're very nice. Some of them are very dull and some of them are very vibrant. But we're going to get the 24 set. So that's going to run about 38.23. You can use them like regular colored pencils or graphite. They shade like graphite, but they're colored. There's pigment in there with the graphite. It's nice, and then of course you need water brush or some kind of brush. 
you want very little water when you go over that so that it just blends it out a little bit unless you're trying to blend out a lot but for the most part where you put it down is where you want to keep it and you just blend it out a little bit so there's your brushes again I'm gonna say water brushes about twenty dollars the whole thing together is still under a hundred dollars ninety six thirty seven is the total that's for your at your hot press high quality book you can put, get this book obviously it works this is the Canson XL book there's an example of doing a sketch with the graphite tint and there's many many layers on that ball and in the shadow area it's not just one or two layers there are at least five or six layers there that I diluted with water that I made sure I liquefied and the paper did not pill so this book will work it, it'll be okay that would drop your $29 down to $9. So you take $20 off that, about $75 for that set. Okay, another set. Maybe you're into markers. And some people are. Some people love markers. I highly recommend getting the Crescent Render book. I have one that's this is an 8x8. Eight eight. It takes the color. It, you can. I'm going to show you, give you an example. Can you see how much ink is on that? Of course it's reflecting black but you can see how much ink I put on that top all around the border and then you go to the other side of the page so there's nothing there's nothing up here there's a couple smudges over here that's because I was touching this ink while it was still drying and because I'm a moron sometimes but but there's no it, it never bleeds through it says it can take watercolor I wouldn't try it, it kind of makes the page weird but any you can put anything else on there you can put you can put ink on there regular ink water based ink you can put marker alcohol based ink you can put colored pencil on there it's just anything works on that paper it's a good book and that crescent render book the 8x8 is about $18.10 right now I would still get a set of fine liners because I put details in the color that's what I like to do so I would get that which is another $8.69. I would get a set of the Sakura Jelly Roll because you may want to put highlight over the ink and putting that on marker is very easy. It's actually easier than putting it on top of watercolor or something like that because the ink does not move. Where watercolor, when you wet it a little bit, it moves a little bit. Sometimes it blends in with the Jelly Roll. Not this way. You can put it on there, it'll be fine. And then, for the markers, everybody likes to do something different. I like the Winsor Newton Pro markers, but some people don't like those. Some people like the Copic markers, whatever. We're talking about a little bit more of a budget. With alcohol markers, you can get some of the cheaper brands, like the Ohuhus, or I think they're, I don't know who came up with that name, but anyway, the Ohuhu markers, they work just like Oh, maybe not as smooth, but almost as smooth as Copics. I've tried several different markers. I've tried the Spectrum Noir and I've done the Pro markers. I've tried the Copic once, one time. I've used a Copic, but just one marker and just to see how it works in the store. And it's it's not anything special for me, but whatever. you Whatever you want, but you can get like a set of the 48 of Ohuhu's for $39. I don't think that's a problem. If you did that, you would end up with under $75 for this whole kit. The book, the fine liner, the jelly roll, and those markers. So 75 bucks, that's not bad for alcohol markers. Alcohol markers are expensive. That's not terrible. Lastly, I just want to bring up colored pencils. A lot of people like colored pencils. Now my recommendation for colored pencils is based mostly on experience with the type of paper. I'm looking at Stillman and Burn, either the Alpha Series or the Nova Gray or Tan. E either one of those three, they're the exact same paper, just one's white, one's gray, and one's tan. It's the exact same type of paper, same texture, and it works the same. That there is nothing special, but it is a colored pencil piece, and there are many 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 layers of colored pencil on there and the back of the page the back of the page didn't buckle at all there's no buckling 
at all, and I used the odorless mineral spirits to blend it out. I probably put... I, I can't remember exactly. There's at least seven or eight, I would say, just layers of colored pencil on top of that. It may not look that wonderful because I don't know what I'm doing, but it's fine. It works fine, and the, the paper holds up great, and you can just keep putting color on top of color on top of color. Of course, with the Odorous Mineral Spirits, you have to get some kind of a brush, and I like these little scrubber brushes. They're very, like, tight bristled brushes, but you barely dip in the odorous mineral spirits and then you wipe it off on a paper towel so it's barely anything on there. And then when you go on top of the colored pencil, it'll blend very nicely, very smoothly like butter. Wonderful. It's also a matter of the colored pencils. So, the Faber-Castell Polychromos, the 36 set, there's every color that you could possibly need. You don't need 120 colored pencils for the whole set. I am one of those people that likes to collect things, so I would look to collect a whole 120 colors just to say I had them all. But I only have the 36 set here. I've never needed more than that. You can blend these and mix them. They work very well. They work very smooth when you put them down very smooth, very velvety texture. However, they're not my favorite colored pencil. The set of these for the 36 is $48.99. My favorite colored pencils are a little less, but they're lacking in the reds, like the bright colors. So for me, what I would get, this is the set of 24 Derwent drawing pencils. They, do you see how smooth they blend with the uh, with the odorless mineral spirits? See how smooth that is? Absolutely my favorite colored pencils. The colors, they're muted. That's what I like. So when I go to do something, I usually grab these. And they're, they are my favorite colored pencils by far. And a set of those, the full set of 24 is about $40, $41, somewhere around there. You also need the Odorless Mineral Spirits, which could range anywhere if you get the Mona Lisa Odorless Mineral Spirits. That's the ones that I get. That's what I use. And if you use so little. I've only ever bought one little small bottle ever in my entire art career life. And it works fine. It lasts forever. $13, that's not bad, but you can also get a lot of people like Gamsol. That's, you can get that brand and it's like $9 for a bottle. So whatever you want to do. Now you can also get the Canson Mixed Media XL book for colored pencils. That's colored pencil. That's with the Polychromos colored pencils. And they, there's ton of layers after layer after layer on here. Blend it out, put more layers, blend it out, put more layers. And then I think on top, I just put a final uh, layer of colored pencil without blending. It held up fine. It di didn't break apart the page. It didn't destroy it. The back side of the page is not, is not worn through. Everything's fine with it. So you could use that and get a little bit more mileage than you would out of a Stillman & Burn as far as for the dollar. So with this set, we're talking about a book and then a set of pencils, some kind of colored pencils, odorless mineral spirits, and a brush. Your range is between $70 and $96, $97. So somewhere around there, still under $100 for all of it. I know that what someone says is not a lot of money to someone else is a lot of money. Some people do not have $100 of disposable income to do something. Some people have $1,000 sitting that they're looking to burn a hole through their pocket to go ahead and spend on something. So I get it. So I tried to give you as many options as I could here with a broad range. You have anywhere from $30 up to $100, but everything I've given you is under $100. There, it, This is a lot less than many other things that you could do. Like musical instruments cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to get started with it. But this is relatively inexpensive to get going. And if I had to get started all over again, these are the things that I would look at. I definitely love my watercolor, but I love my colored pencils and I love, love the graphitant pencils. Those are my, my favorite thing ever. You can find a way 
to do whatever you need to do and get started with it even if you're just getting a pack of pencils and a pad I think the most for me the most important thing is always the paper can the paper handle what I'm about to do to it because if it can't there's no point if, it, if the paper can't handle it why even do it so that's the most important thing to me is the paper that's where I would spend my money and everything else I could get by with something a little bit cheaper. The re what I gave you today was all professional quality stuff. All light, except for the markers. Those are die based. They're not going to be light fast. But everything else I gave you is light fast. The polychromos pencils, the Derwent drawing pencils, the watercolor. It's all light fast. It's never going to fade. Well, it shouldn't. You shouldn't hold it in the window. If people do that, they're like, oh, look at this test I did, and they leave it in the window for six months with direct sunlight. I don't understand that. I don't know anyone who does that. I also, on the other side, don't know anybody who has a museum in their house and puts up their artwork in complete darkness with just dim lighting around it that's not going to fade the art. So there's a compromise there, and people are ridiculous on both sides. But... I'm just giving you what I would do. I hope this helped you. It, let me know. What would you do if there is something different? If you don't like... Some people hate that Canton Mixed Media book. I understand that. They'd rather go with Strathmore or something. That's fine. Use that then. The Strathmore Mixed Media paper is great. It's like 184 pound. It's thick paper. So you can do a lot of different things with it. I don't know how it is with color pencil. I don't know how it is with watercolor. I've never used it for that. Now, I, I can't say that. I have used the mixed media, like the 90 pound, those small like vision books or whatever they are, the 90 pound mixed media paper in there. I've never used the watercolor paper uh, other than 90 pound watercolor paper, but I've never used the heavier watercolor paper. I don't know how it all acts and interacts with itself. So that's up to you. You got to figure that out, whatever you want to use. If you hate this Excel paper, some people do. They just absolutely hate it. That's fine. You use what you want to use. What works for me, if I was starting over, that's the first thing I would get. It's bright white. You can put other things on it. Yeah, the watercolor is going to buckle the page. So what? It's your sketching in there. This is not a finished piece that you're trying to sell to someone for them to hang up on their wall. There's just sketching. It's just doing line and wash, doing some things you need to sketch out or whatever. It, it's fine. It's a good book for that. And it represents color really well. It just holds that color on the surface really well. So any kind of watercolor, marker, anything you put on it kind of sits on top. And you can see the color. It's bright and vibrant. And that's what I like. So that's one of the first things I'd probably get. Fine liners. I don't really like graphite, even though I love to use it. I love the way it works, but it's too messy for me. And something I didn't mention, if I was going to get graphite, other than these, the Mars Lumograph Black, because they don't reflect anything, I think I would get the Derwent sketching pencils, the water ones. These pencils, see the little blue line on top, that little blue stripe? That means that they're water soluble and they have an HB 4B and 8B and that's all I would need. The HB 4B and 8B, those are all your values. You can get all the other values out of those. And then you just add a little water and it kind of blends out like watercolor. Unless I was going to get the Graphitint, which does the same thing. You have a gray pencil there as well. You can use it the same way and then you can use some color with it as well and get some nice shading with that. Now I know I didn't address everything. I didn't address acrylics and oils and pastels and all those things. I'm just trying to help you get going with something. There, I could do this all day with all the different mediums that are used. I just gave you a few that you could start with like graphite and ink and watercolor and marker and color pencil. And the, the water-soluble graphite is my favorite, so that I included that one. I probably didn't need to, but I did. But um, you could do all of the different mediums and go through all the sets. I just pointed out a couple that I'm going to use anyway, so this is what I would get. I would look at these sets and say this is what I would start with, but you do what you want to do. All in all, I have run my mouth like crazy. Just some ideas. Maybe this is not like the Christmas list thing. 
But you could do that. You can come up with, okay, maybe I want to look for these things for the holidays and say, hey, look, this is what I would like. Either give me money or give me the thing and we'll have a good day. As usual, I will stuff the bottom of this video with a ton of links that you can check out and buy through my affiliate links and it'll, it'll help the channel a little bit. It won't cost you anything extra, it just helps the channel. And I always say that if you don't want to, you don't have to do that with me, but if you want, to, if you're gonna buy on Amazon anyway, go find someone that you're supporting, an artist or a channel that you like, that has links. It doesn't even have to be what you're buying. You can buy a bag of pretzels, but on their link. And so go through their link, buy a bag of pretzels, and they get a small commission for it. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. And it helps out the, the people that you're trying to support and help. And it's nice. So thumb up the video if you don't want to do anything that I just said. If you want to you have your own set of things that you like and nothing on the list even appeals to you and I've just wasted your time I'm sorry but still you, you give it a thumb up it helps me alright that's about it for me I'm gonna go I'll see you in the next one